Assalamu alaikum. I'm Dr. Asif Nawaj. Today I'm going to make a new video about the abdominal part of esophagus and the stomach. Let's start. This is the abdominal part of esophagus. In the thorax, you all know that there are three parts of esophagus that is, cervical part, thoracic part, and the abdominal part. So, this is the abdominal part of the esophagus okay this is the diaphragmatic area impression this is the diaphragmatic impression so above the diaphragm this is called the thoracic part of esophagus and the rest of the part is abdominal part of esophagus okay so it is 1.25 centimeter long and just situated below the diaphragm okay so here you can see the uh, stomach and the this is the part of abdominal part of the esophagus so you can see here there is a phrenico esophageal ligament so this is this a thin layer of ligament which is present uh, the thoracic part of the esophagus along with the diaphragm and the part of the stomach that's why it is called the phrenico esophageal that means the diaphragm is partly attached with the thoracic part of the esophagus so by this ligament esophagus is situated in this plane it is slightly oblique and towards the left side okay so uh, here you can see a uh, epithelial junction that is here is a non keratinized stratified squamous epithelium in the thoracic part of the esophagus and the abdomen contains simple columnar epithelium so these two epithelium are changed in the squamo columnar junction that means this is the squamous this, this is the columnar so this so this plane is called the squamo columnar junction uh, these after these junctions the functionally esophagus finished and the stomach is going to start so the important topic here is uh, the epithelial changes and the name of the ligaments and the length that is 1.25 centimeter and slightly oblique from the mid uh, and what is the um, vertebral level of the esophagus or the esophageal opening of the diaphragm that is thoracic 10 so at, at the level of thoracic 10 uh, vertebra um, esophagus is pierced through the diaphragm okay now uh, let's start the stomach okay now this is the next part that is stomach you can see the abdominal part of esophagus that I already discussed from externally that when we open the abdominal wall what we can see a part of the stomach first of uh, this is the stomach okay it is look like uh, sickle shaped and you can see this is the abdominal part of esophagus and the fundus that is elevated portion fundus and this is the body of the stomach and this is the pyloric part these all are the pyloric part so you can see there is two or three imaginary plane that means you can see there is a imaginary plane here 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 and here okay what is represents that imaginary plane so this imaginary plane represents the difference or the demarcation between the stomach and the abdominal part of esophagus this demarcation point represents the fundic part of the stomach and the body of the stomach so this is the body of the stomach and this is the fundic part of the stomach so 
it is an imaginary plane from the cardiac notch so you can see here uh, a slightly oblique abdominal part of esophagus and the fundic part of the stomach and in between this there is an angle okay there is an angle it is called the cardiac notch or incisura hmm? so you have to uh, understand the angle of cardio fundic angle it is a cardio cardio esophageal angle so this is the cardiac part and this is the fundic part so cardio fundic angle this is the junction so this is the body of the stomach and this is the pylorus so here the body and the surface is this is the anterior superior surface and posteriorly uh, the another surface is called the posterior inferior surface so there is a two surface anterior superior surface and posterior inferior surface and the two borders that is medial border and the lateral border so it represent, represents a curvature so you can see here it is a cur it is one kind of curvature it is another kind of curvature so this curvature is called the laser curvature which is smaller and this is called the greater curvature so this is the greater curvature this is the laser curvature so greater curvature is larger than the laser curvature okay and the rest of the portion is pylorus okay so pylorus is divided into two region one is pyloric antrum and one is pyloric canal okay so these two part is div imag uh, divided by the two imaginary plane that is uh, a imaginary ima imaginary plane from the inguinal notch or incisura epicis cordis so this is called the incisura epicis cordis here there is a notch from here up to the greater curvature so there is a curved line which differ the pyloric part with the body of the stomach and the pylorus is divided by into two parts that is the pyloric canal pyloric antrum which is divided by another imaginary plane which is started for incisor epicis cordis up to the greater curvature towards the right side okay this is the right plane so towards the right side this two imaginary plan divide the pylorus into two regions pyloric canal pyloric antrum okay so this is the parts of the stomach now the interior of the stomach that is here you can see the interior part of the stomach so if we uh, remove the uh, layers that we saw you can see the muscular organ so stomach is a muscular organ hollow muscular organ so it made of of muscles so first we have seen the serous uh, membrane now the muscular layer so there are three kinds of muscles that is outer longitudinal middle oblique you can see the oblique in middle and the inner circular so you can see the outer longitudinal and the middle circular and inner oblique okay so you can see here the outer longitudinal middle circular and inner oblique so this is the plane of muscles and you can see there is two sphincter here what is a cardiac sphincter and another is pyloric sphincter you can see a, what is the internal structure of sphincter we can see here the sphincter is uh, nothing but a circular muscles okay that is 
the middle circular muscles condensed with the cardiac and pyloric part and form a sphincter or ring like structures okay which helps in maintaining food bolus of and uh, or the transit time of the food in the stomach okay so this is the muscle layers and what are the internal structures you can see here the internal structures so here the internal structures you can see the there are various rugosities or the mucus folds it is called the rugi it is anotherly called the gastric folds okay so this is the cardiac orifice and this is the pyloric part so we already know that this is the cardiac sphincters and the pyloric sphincters okay so this is the inner surface and the surface epithelium was simple columnar epithelium okay so this is the laser curvature this is the gator curvature you can see from here so now physiologically there are different cells present in the fundic part that is cardiac zone some cells or glands present in the bo body area and some presence in pyloric part that will be discussed later so the rugosity helps in expansion of the stomach so when food bolus come to the stomach that is food bolus will distend the stomach so in that time the stomach will enlarge and distend it in that time this surface area becomes enlarged so this rugosity will diminished when you can see there is a triangular area so how we can discuss that so i already draw these pictures and mark the organs with different colors to understand the area perfectly so this is the left lobe of the liver okay this is the inferior margin of the left lobe of the liver and this is the left coastal margin left coastal margin and this is the transverse colon okay superior border of the transverse colon so in these three structures poses and triangular area where the stomach is attached with the abdominal wall what it is there is no structure between the abdominal wall and the stomach in this area is called the triangular space or triangular area of the stomach so it has some clinical importance so when the complete obstruction of the stomach so a patient cannot take food from the mouth so that person must be feeded with the feeding tube or catheter so in that time we have to make a hole in the anterior abdominal wall along with the gastric triangle or the gastric triangular area and, and that procedure is called the gastrostomy that is feeding gastrostomy so we will put a feeding tube through the tr gastric triangular area directly to the stomach percutaneously that means from the outside without making a laparotomy or without opening an abdominal cavity we can directly put a gastric tube through the triangular area that's why it has some clinical importance okay so i already told you that cardiac area body and pyloric gland has some different glands of 
that will give uh, different secretions like here you can see the abdominal part of esophagus and this is the stomach area and the part and this is the letter the duodenum the others so you can see there are three kind of glands okay this is the tubular alveolar glands and uh, direct tubular glands and they, it is also a by lobular tubular glands so these glands is located in different region of the stomach so you can see the cardiac gland that means these gland present in the cardiac area of the stomach okay and uh, these glands present in the lamina propria so first we have to discuss the layers this is the surface epithelium okay this is this non keratinous stratified squamous epithelium and this is the columnar epithelium okay stomach will become columnar so that is simple columnar epithelium and the second layer is a lamina propria so this blue area is called the lamina propria and this is called the muscularis mucosae and this is the submucous coat and the muscular coat that is the three layers okay so this gland present in the lamina propria and opens in the mucous membrane okay the gastric gland in the cardiac part you can see a uh, cardiac gland that presents cardiac part that means the fundus and the cardiac region not in the body not in the pylorus that is fundus and the cardiac part you can see that that is tubular alveolar glands and the you can see the fundic glands that means the whole the fundus part of the cardiac gland which also helps in uh, there are some things in the fundic part of the stomach and you can see the pylori gland that present in the pylori part of the stomach so here the secretion now the cardiac gland which is a very prone or there are many glands in the lining epithelial lining of the these glands possess that gymogenic cell that is chip cell it is also called the chip cell okay the chip cell present in the cardiac region that's why chip cell secretes pepsinogen which will activate it by the hydrochloric acid so pepsinogen is secreted from the gast cardiac gland and the fundic gland will secrete the parietal cells okay it possess the parietal cells parietal cell will secrete a lot of hydrochloric acid okay so it presents most in the fundic gland and the part of the body but the pylori gland which possesses a g cell that means the g cell of the stomach which secrete the gastrin gastrin is a local hormone which is secreted from the pyloric part of the stomach and this gastrin will stimulate the parietal cell to produce a lot of hydrochloric acid that hydrochloric acid will activate pepsinogen to pepsin it will help full for protein digestion there are also some absorptions of alcohol there are some absorption of some proteins and uh, some minerals too because stomach is mostly a reservoir but there is a little protein digestion which is going to be started or activated in the stomach but there is no other carbohydrate or lipid digestion or absorption there is no role in lipid and carbohydrate absorption or di digestion so now the ph okay due to the presence of hydrochloric acid the stomach environment is highly acidic that is ph is 1 to 2 or 1 to 3.5 in the according to the davids davidson or guyton the ph is 1 to 3.5 or 1 to 
due to the you can see that this is the mucus gel or mucus barrier and just under the mucus gel you can see the pH is 6 to 7 it is a bit alkaline but the environment of the stomach is acidic but just below the mucus barrier it is highly alkaline and then you can see the gastric mucosa so this is the mucus barrier okay so the stomach to protect the stom gastric mucosa from the hydrochloric acid we can see the highly thick mucus barrier to protect the gastric epithelium so that hydrochloric acid will neutralize through the mucus gel and the this alkaline layer will neutralize hydrochloric acid so that that so that hydrochloric acid cannot burn the gastric mucosa but sometimes these mechanisms or maintenance of the mucus barrier will hindered through some conditions like alcoholic uh, peoples or uh, highly frigid drinks caffeine drinkers and others like uh, fried items those patients take a lot of fried items and the caffeine and the highly uh, nutritious food or protein rich food that mucus uh, maintenance of mucus membrane can be hampered so what are the substances which helps in maintaining the mucus barrier that is prostaglandin okay so sometimes in the exam you, you can find the question that who will maintain the gastric mucosa that means prostaglandin which will vasodilate the gastric submucous coat blood vessels that will heal the mucus barrier and the parasympathetic supply that is one of the important autonomic supply that is parasympathetic supply which is maintained by vagus nerve that will helps in increasing the mucus gel secretion that will increase the secretion of mucus gel that also helps in neutralization of the hydrochloric acid okay now you can see the i saw i draw a parietal cells okay you can see the hydrochloric acid is the end product which is secreted from the parietal cell okay so how hydrochloric acid formed we can in the bloodstream or in the body water is about 65 percent and in the respiratory excretion or if any metabolic end product carbon dioxide is usually found so water and carbon dioxide reunited to form carbonic acids that carbonic acid will break down in bicarbonate and proton okay that proton will go to hydrochloric acid in exchange of potassium from the food source that potassium will go through the bloodstream and the chloride will go directly to the gastric lumen with the chloride channel that proton and chloride channel become form hydrochloric acid and the bicarbonate which will go in exchange of chlorine chloride in the bloodstream and form sodium bicarbonate which is alkaline which is an alkaline source so you can see there are various receptors of parietal cell like gastrin receptor histamine receptor acetylcholine secret receptors prostaglandin receptors and uh, somatostatin receptors so what are the functions of those histamine receptor that means uh, when the histamine molecule attached with the ACE2 receptor it will stimulate the hydrochloric acid secretion that means when ACE2 receptor is stimulated hydrochloric acid will secrete more than a normal level 
it is a G cell receptor that is when the local hormone hagastrin attached with the G cell it will also stimulate the parietal cell to produce hydrochloric acid and acetylcholine that means this is the neurotransmitter when the acetylcholine is stimulated that means there is a nerve increased nerve impulse that will also helps in stimulate the hydrochloric acid secretion and you can see another two receptor that is one is prostaglandin receptor and somatostatin receptor so somatostatin will inhibit the hydrochloric acid it, it is the control system control receptor of the parietal cell to uh, to prevent over secretion of hydrochloric acid and prostaglandin will help to increase the mucosal barrier so that gastric parietal cells that these cells and the along with the other cells will not be damaged with the secreted hydrochloric acid so to protect the cells physically prostaglandin will help ultimately and somatostatin will help to prevent over secretion of hydrochloric acid okay now we will go for artery supply in the physiology you will discuss that with so much clearly okay now you can see the you can see the artery supply now so artery supply the stomach is supplied by a different arterial sources that means in the abdomen the visceras and the part of the other organs like muscles vessels those are supplied by the major three arterial source that is celiac trunk superior mesenteric artery inferior mesenteric artery so you can see the celiac trunk in the foregut celiac trunk is embryologically supply the foregut and the stomach is a part of the foregut okay so this is the celiac trunk you can see in the celiac trunk there is three important branches that is left gastric artery this is the left gastric artery splenic artery and the common hepatic artery so celiac trunk has three main branches left gastric splenic and common hepatic artery left gastric artery will give the supply to the abdominal part of the esophagus and the part of the cardiac region that is cardiac part of the stomach and the splenic artery which will lies posterior to the stomach will divide into two branches that is short gastric arteries and the left gastroepiploic artery okay so this splenic artery will give rise the short gastric and left gastroepiploic artery the short gastric artery will give the fundic part of the stomach and the left gastroepiploic artery will give supply to the greater curvature on the body of the stomach and the common hepatic artery which has three branches one is common hepatic proper which will go to the liver or one is right gastric artery here and one is the gastroduodenal artery so this is the right gastric artery and this is the gastroduodenal artery and this is common hepatic hepatic common hepatic artery proper that is which will directly go to the hepatobiliary system and the right gastric artery will correspond with the left gastric and the gastroduodenal will go posterior to the first part of the duodenum and this is the pyloric region and it is the first part of the duodenum so it will go posterior to the first part of the duodenum and gives branches to the left side it will gives the gas right gastroepiploic artery which helps to give supply to the pyloric canal and pyloric antrum and the right gastric artery will also give supply to the uh, pyloric part and the laser curvature and along with the pylorus 
so this is the artery supply so in the living body how it look like let's see so you can see this is the abdominal aorta and here is the celiac trunk it is a much more bigger vessels okay so celiac trunk will give three important structures that is this is the lab gastric this is the splenic you can see it is an a tortuous vessel goes posterior to the stomach and give rise to short gastric artery and the left gastroepiploic artery and one is the common hepatic artery proper which will go to the liver and one is gastrodenal artery which will go posterior to the first part of the duodenum and that's why it is called the gastroduodenal it will help also give supply to the duodenum along with the stomach that's why it is called so called gastroduodenal artery it goes posterior to the stomach and gives to right gastroepiploic artery which will give supply to the greater curvature along with the pylorus of the stomach which will correspond with the left gastroepiploic artery and there are also a right gastric artery that means here the right gastric artery so right gastric artery will give also in the laser curvature along with the pylorus part, pyloric part of the stomach so how this is how it look like in the living body okay now we will go to the venous drainage okay now you can see the venous drainage so venous drainage that means you have to know the systemic and portal it will be discussed later on when in the portal systemic anastomosis that some vessels is directly go to the portal system and some vessels directly draining to the inferior vena cava so in this stomach there is maximum is a systemic sorry maximum is portal that means the vessels you are seeing in the stomach maximum are portal except the hemiagigous vein which will drain directly into the inferior vena cava but the other vessels that is splenic and the others that you saw that will directly go through the portal vein so it is this is the portal vein the main venous uh, drainage here it is a portal vein it will go to the liver so some vessels will drain to the portal vein some vessels drain to the superior mesenteric vein some are some into the splenic vein so you can see a great vein that lies posterior to the stomach it is called the splenic vein and you can see this part is a uh, part of the superior mesenteric vein that will superior mesenteric vein and the splenic vein reunited to form portal vein okay so this is the portal vein this is the part of the portal vein this is the part of abdominal superior mesenteric vein and the splenic vein these two vein reunited from portal vein so you can see this is the right gastroepiploic which directly enter into the superior mesenteric vein just remember that short gastric and the left gastroepiploic vein drain into the splenic vein so short gastric vein goes to the splenic vein and the left gastroepiploic vein drains into the splenic vein but right gastroepiploic vein drains into the superior mesenteric vein uh, now the left is a and the, the rest of the venous genus that is left gastric vein and the right gastric vein those all are drained into the directly into the portal vein so right and left gastric vein will drain the blood from the lesser curvature along with the stomach and the cardiac part and part of the pyloric part but the short gastric vein and the left gastroepiploic vein that will drain the blood from the body and the pyloric part 
and the fundus okay now how what how it look like in the little body let's see here look at that this is the inferior vena cava which is systemic and one is this is the portal vein which will go through the liver so here you can see the right and left gastric vein this is the left gastric vein this is the right gastric vein left gastric vein will go through the laser curvature and they correspond with the right gastric vein so right gastric vein here is the right gastric vein and you can see there is an another one single vein that is called the p pyloric vein of myo it is also called the pre pyloric vein of myo this vein will demarcate the duodenum and the stomach okay it will make a difference between the stomach and the duodenum here the stomach ends and the duodenum is going to start it so p pyloric vein of myo detects the demarcation between stomach and the duodenum so this is this present in between these two part it must remember it it has a surgical importance so right and left gastric vein will drain into the portal vein but the right gastrobiploic will drain into the superior mesenteric vein you can see it is a superior mesenteric vein so it will di directly enter into the superior mesenteric vein and there is another vein that is splenic vein which will grow posterior to the stomach that will give rise to splenic vein and left gastrobiploic vein these two vein will directly drain to the splenic vein okay now we will go for lymphatic drainage it is very important uh, lymphatic drainage is usually been asked in the exam okay it has some surgical importance too so this is the greenish area which indicates uh, from where the limb lymphatic drainage will come from so you can see the sources of lymphatic drainage that is it is the celiac nodes okay this is the celiac group of nodes this is the hepatic group of nodes this is the pylori group of node first you have to demarcate the groups celiac group hepatic group pyloric group okay and this is the epiploic group and one is pancreatic pancreatic splenic nodes that is pancreatic group and this is the cardiac group so the area of the lymphatic drainage will go to the source that is you can see a uh, demarcated areas so here is a horizontal there is a vertical plane it is the laser curvature and this is the pyloric part so the laser curvature and the part of the cardiac part will drain to the celiac nodes and the pyloric part and the suprapyloric infrapyloric so this is a suprapyloric group of limb node or the hepatic limb nodes and the infrapyloric or the pyloric nodes these all so any pathologies or lymphatic that goes in two direction one is the to the pyloric part one is to the hepatic part and the this is the epiploic so the epiploic nodes present in the greater curvature that is greater momentum it will go through the greater momentum it will give lymphatic drainage from the greater curvature and the body and the part of the epiploic region this whole area which is drained by pancreatico splenic nodes all are drained to the pancreatic splenic nodes and the cardiac part and the pundic part all are the drained to the cardiac or the paracardiac paragastric sorry gastric nodes to the paragastric nodes 
or the cardiac nodes you also uh, can describe it as a cardiac nodes because the in some books it is uh, named by the cardiac as a cardiac topic okay in the living body how it look like let's see you can see that here this is the celiac nodes huge celiac nodes this is the hepatic nodes you can see uh, multiple hepatic nodes and this is the sub pyloric or pyloric nodes supra pyloric that pyloric nodes is divided into two forms that is supra pyloric and infra pyloric or the sub pyloric's so sub or infra same in the below the pyloric part it's so that's why it is called the sub pyloric or infra pyloric and supra pyloric that means the limb node presence superior to the pyloric region this is called supra pyloric part and uh, you can see the left gastric nodes okay so celiac nodes and the part this is the left gastric nodes so abdominal part of the esophagus and the laser curvature and the cardiac part that all are drained to the left gastric nodes and this is called the pancreatic splenic nodes okay so the body and the the whole body and the part of the fundus will go through the pancreatic splenic nodes so this is the epiploic nodes that presents along the gator curvatures and you can see the fatty layers it is uh, nothing but gator omentum and this node lies within the gator omentum or a layer of uh, first and second layers in between the first and second layers of gator omentum i will discuss later that about the gator omentum it has four layers so in first two layers in between first two layers epiploic nodes is usually present there so this is the lymphatic drainage sometimes in the exam you have to ask and must draw the lymphatic drainage along with the lymphatic area okay now we are going to start nervous system okay the nervous regulation of the stomach so you can see the spinal cord section of thoracic 6 to thoracic 9 okay so stomach secretion is autonomic totally autonomic because it is a viscera visceral supply is autonomic that means it has both sympathetic and parasympathetic supply so that autonomic lymphatic autonomic nervous system will come from the thoracic 6 to thoracic 9 segments of spinal cord so it has a dorsal root and ventral root so here some nerve fibers come from the, the dorsal root and some are come from the ventral roots okay so to uh, know it better i draw it with different colors because the dorsal root ganglia so you, it is a dorsal root ganglia so the dorsal root represents the sensory sympathetic system that is the sensory sympathetic fibers which is a pain sensitive so when we feel pain in the stomach with the peptic ulcer disease or any disease that pain must be felt through the sympathetic fiber sensory sympathetic fiber which is pain sensitive which is come through the dorsal root ganglia of thoracic 6 to thoracic 9 and the ventral that is uh, the uh, ventral root has two parts that are preganglionic and postganglionic so this pre and postganglionic those all are the sympathetic now i am discussing about the sympathetic system first so pain insensitive that means preganglionic fiber that will come through the ventral root of the spinal cord and it will goes through the sympathetic chain and as a gray rami communicants so it is a gray rami communicants sympathetic system and comes to the stomach and then it will divide another nerve that is called postganglionic celiac plexus which is motor first we 
saw the sensory pathway with the greenish color then the motor motor has through two nerve segments as what one, one is preganglionic that is before the ganglion it is the ganglion so this part is preganglionic and the rest of the part is post ganglionic okay so sympathetic preganglionic fiber is shorter and the post ganglionic part is slightly longer it will finish in the celiac plexus so first this is segments 1 through 6 6 to 9 and it will give a relay to the celiac plexus this is the sympathetic supply and the motor now the parasympathetic supply so parasympathetic supply has two trunk you all know that foregut parasympathetic supply is the vagus nerve so in the vagus nerve there is a two trunk of vagus nerve anterior vagal trunk and the posterior vagal trunk so anterior vagal trunk lies anterior to the stomach okay it's just present below the uh, or that uh, it situated surround the cardiac orifice okay you can see a cord like structure along the cardiac orifice it is called the vagal trunk so it has divided into two part anteriorly anterior vagal trunk and posteriorly posterior vagal trunk okay so anterior vagal trunk will give supply to the anterior surface of the stomach so anterior vagal trunk has two different branches one is pyloric branches which gives gives the parasympathetic supply to the pylorus and one other is ascending branch which goes upwards okay to the so anterior vagal trunk has two branches first hepatic branch which is divided into ascending and pyloric branches another one gives to the main gastric para parasympathetic branch which is called the nerve of a lutter jet okay sometimes it is asked in the exam that is gastric branch of the vagus nerve is called the nerve of lutter jet which will which will give supply to the anterior surface of the stomach and the another branch that is hepatic branch one goes to the stomach uh, sorry liver and another goes to the pyloric part of the stomach okay this is the anterior vagal trunk and the, this is the posterior vagal trunk this is the celiac plexus i forgot to mention the name no problem so this is the celiac plexus okay by celiac plexus you can see the uh, sympathetic post ganglionic fibers so the celiac plexus so it is not the part of the parasympathetic supply so we will discuss the posterior vagal trunk so posterior vagal trunk lies posterior to the stomach and gives to the posterior surface posterior inferior surface of the stomach so anterior trunk will give supply to the anterior superior surface and posterior vagal trunk will give supply to the posterior inferior surface okay so that is the says uh, stomach so i hope you you enjoy the lectures so uh, please like and sub subscribe my channel and also keep connected with us thank you very much